Welcome to all you need to know before imaging this or that. In this quick video, we're going to show you some tips and tricks for how to get the best possible image for this target. Let's, Let's go. go. So you will find M29 in the juiciest constellation ever, Cygnus. You wrote that. I did it. Yes. <laughs> It's also really close to a bunch of popular nebulae like the Veil Nebulae, the Seder region, the North America Nebula, the Pelican Nebula, and even the Crescent Nebula. It's located 5,870 light years away, so far. But the best time to capture it is in the summer, which is right now, right now. M29 is, in my opinion, the most underrated cluster in the entire Messi catalog. Even in the entire night sky. There, I said it. It doesn't have any cool nickname or anything, but I love this cluster so much. Yeah, he really does love this cluster so much. So much that I'm sure that he dreams about it. He, in fact, won't shut up about it. So, what makes it so amazing, in your opinion? So, I really love this cluster because one time I was imaging the... I mean, I went to the mountain to image the comet Neowise and because the comet was rising around like four, I think four something in the morning, I had no choice but to image something else in the meantime all night. And I picked a few clusters randomly, completely randomly. And one of them was M29. And once I was stacking everything at home, I was shocked seeing um, how beautiful M29 was. I mean, especially how beautiful the surrounding gases were in M29. It's like a pink heaven. It's so beautiful. We get it. You love it. It's amazing. I expected it to look very boring. I mean, I looked up some images of M29 in the past and everything I could find back then were just like very boring looking images, just plain black sky and a few stars here and there. But uh, like for example, here, the All Sky Survey, look at this image. It's not very impressive when you look at it. But as soon as I started the data, I was just blown away and my life was changed forever. Yeah, I mean, I guess you really can't judge, uh, you know, a, a target by what it looks like online. You can't really underestimate what it really is like unless you spend time on it yourself. True. You can find many surprises. So just because something is not image imaged as often doesn't mean that you shouldn't go after it. Obviously, M29 proved Antoine wrong, and that's why he fell in love with it and wants to marry it and have its babies. <laughs> So anyway, Messier 29 is a uh, magnitude 7.1, which makes it pretty faint. Um, it is also small, so you'll want to capture it with a large telescope. Although uh, I used a, you know, the Newtonian 8 inch, which is 800 millimeter focal length. So it's not that large, especially with a full frame camera. So I think one of the, the best things about this cluster is that you can see all the gas surrounding it. So even wide field, you might get an amazing image. So I would say, that in the end, you can use any size telescope to capture it and you'll get an amazing result no matter what. So if we take a look into the cluster itself, we'll see that it's made up of a lot of blue and yellow stars. As for the gas all around, it's hydrogen alpha with dark dust lanes here and there. So you can image this target with any camera. You can use an unmodded DSLR camera if you want to, or a cooled monochrome camera, up to you. Uh, although because there is so much HA all around the area, a HA filter will help or a modded camera will help as well. So here is a single shot taken from our setup in a Bortle 3 zone. If you're in a very light polluted area, you would do best to image for as long as you can to reduce the noise. So this is a cluster, so as a starting point I would suggest doing 30 seconds to 1 minute exposures. Although it's an open cluster, so we don't really have a bunch of stars all smooshed together. So you can go crazy and do long exposures, like 5 to 10 minutes if you want to. You should be safe because of how uh, spread out the stars are. So you don't really have to do very short exposures. And if you do long exposures, you likely have better uh, results for the gas anyway. And try to spend at least 2 hours on it, um, that's as a starting point and you can go longer if you want to reveal the gases even more. The final result that we came up with was 2 hours and 45 minutes of total integration time. We hope this video helped you get to know this target just a little bit better and helped to prepare you to image it. 
We would love to see your image, so go on our website and find this object on our gallery and attach your image to the comment section. We would love to see it. And by the way, online, we have a bunch more tips for so many, so many objects. So go on there and check it out. So we'll catch you guys next time and clear skies. Catch guys.